Which World Tour professional cycling team has the lightest bike and which team has the heaviest bike? Well, we found out because I went to a race and weighed them all. This isn't the manufacturer claimed weights. This is what the bikes actually weigh in 2024. The weights of the pros bikes actually surprised us and raised several questions such as, are the teams that have heavier bikes at a disadvantage? And if so, how much of a disadvantage is there to be riding a heavier bike? And how does the weight of your bike compared to what the pros are actually riding? Well, we're gonna answer all of those. And it turns out, actually weighing the bikes was the easy part. The difficult part has been calculating the differences and trying to account for frame sizes, wheel depths, and the fact that for some reason, some teams wanted me to wear a bike with the water bottles in place and the head units on as well. So we've done some calculations to account for that. And then later on in the video, we're gonna go through the actual raw weights as I weighed them at the race. Right, shall we um, kick size off with the heaviest in 18th place? Okay, so <sighs> bottom go. of the charts. Yeah. <laughs> in 18th place, and this is a surprise, is the EF, what are they called these days? EF Education Easy Post. EF Education <laughs> Easy Post with their Cannondale System 6 at 7.78 kilograms. We should point out though, that you only weighed the System 6. So they do have the Super 6, which is lighter. Yeah, I mean, this is gonna be the same, I guess, throughout a couple of different teams throughout this list. Some have got a lighter bike option, but the race that I went to, Tour Down Under, generally people were using the more aero option. Not all though. 17th place was Intermarche with 7.76 kilograms. That's a Cube Lightning Aero. Again, an aero bike. Yeah. Yeah. So already these bikes are all significantly over the UCI's minimum weight limit of 6.8. Quite a lot. By quite a lot, yeah. I mean, that's nearly a hundred gram, um, well, nearly a kilogram over yeah. what it needs to be. Uh, so in 16th place, Lidl Trek with the Trek Madon, 7.61 kilograms. Tell you what, 15th place surprised me, 7.59 kilograms is the Visma Lisa bike. This is the Cervelo S5, which we've said about, is the more aero mo yes. model, not the R5, slightly lighter weight. Yeah, which we're gonna assume because Jumbo Visma have such an emphasis on marginal gains with them going, for example, uh, to that one by setup for Primoz Roglic um, to win the Giro d'Italia, you'd assume that, that in that mode, they were getting really close to that 6.8. We'd like to hope so, wouldn't you? But reading between the lines, <laughs> you'd say that to get to 6.8, they're having to make that bike one by. Yeah. Next up, we have got Astana with the Villa Filante, 7.57 kilograms. Um, this is one of the bikes which I think has got one of the more intricate paint jobs as well, which I think is probably gonna contribute to the weight slightly. Yeah. I think, it's, it's a small difference. Above that, 13th place, 7.54 kilograms, the Movistar with the Canyon Air Road. Like you mentioned, a team which are likely to use the Ultima in other races as well. Yeah, and then interestingly, in 12th place, right next to them, the other Canyon team, um, which was Alpsin de Koenig, with their uh, air road, 7.48 kilograms. Difference between those two though, um, one Shimano, one SRAM, yeah. different wheels as well. Yeah, uh -huh. um, but if you look at the list weights of Jura Ace Di2 versus SRAM Red Access, yeah. Jura Ace Di2 is slightly lighter. Mm, kind of so, makes sense. Mm, kind of there. Um, right, 11th place, I, is a bike that I'm actually really excited about seeing this year is the Van Rysel RSR of Decathlon AG2R Le Mondial. Um, 7.45 kilograms. Respectable. It's like middle of the road there. Respectable. Yeah, I like yeah. that. And then we had uh, Bahrain in 10th place, 7.43 kilograms. But that is for the Reacto, the Merida Reacto, their aero bike. Again, yeah. they do have the Sculptura, which is a very, very light bike. So you think that would probably get into more of that close to sort of seven dead. Yeah, like this middle, so this middle sort of batch and ground of bikes, really small differences between these. In ninth place, uh, 7.41 kilograms, Arcare Samsic, it's the Bianchi Ultra RC. Mm. Um, what do you think of this then? Another team that's gonna then switch to a lighter bike. Yeah, so they have the Specialissima as well. That's the sort of lightest out and out aero bike so far. Uh, next we have, in eighth place, 7.4 kilograms. Yeah. UAE with the Colnago V4RS. 
So they only run one bike, the yeah. V4 RS. Yes, yeah, so six kilograms over, 0. 0.6 of a kilogram over what it could be. What, I, what I do want to highlight about this um, this bike setup though, is one of the teams which are using slightly more specialist parts. They're using those carbon tie chain rings um, and those carbon disc rotors as well. So they've kind of got some tricked out parts, which is going to help save some weight, but clearly not enough to be in with the lightest. Seventh place. Yeah. 7.35 kilograms, so just over half a kilo over the UCR weight limit, is Ineos Grandiers with the Dogma F. What's interesting is that small amount of weight saver from the new paint shop they've got. Yeah. I don't know if it's enough to bump them up the list. Well, anymore, I've yeah. weighed them before and they were coming out at more like 7.4, 7.5 kilos when I was at UAE Tour last year. Maybe the paint has helped. Well, they've, they did some other things as well because they put like titanium or they've, they've modified the little the Garmin mounts and oh, stuff yeah. on, on the front yeah, of the bike. Yeah, that. Um, sixth place, Cofidis with 7.32 kilograms. That's a look, 795 Blade RS. Nice. I do like that bike setup. Fifth place is a good one, 7.28 kilograms now. They're getting progressively lighter. Yeah. This was DSM. All right, we should highlight something here. I didn't physically weigh this bike in 2024. Yeah. It's the 2023 weight, but the bike setup is exactly the same apart from a new colorway. I think we can let that slide. Oh, we can let that slide. Yeah, we can let that slide. Uh, so yes. This is a Scott foil, but they are using the same model this year. Yeah. So that's impressive, because that's a, a full-on aero bike. It's 7.24 kilograms, fourth place, Jayco Alula, the giant propel. Yeah. I really liked this bike, um, and it stood out for me. The job looked good. Yeah, I think that's what's doing it for me. And this bike's gone on a diet as well, because that's a lot <laughs> yeah. lighter than it used to be. Yeah. But you can tell, it kind of looks more all rounderish now. Next up, we're are now- we into the top three? We're into the top three. We're into the podium places. <laughs> so in the top three, 7.17 kilograms Sudal with the specialized SL8. Can you believe we're saying we're into the Sudal top quick step. We're into the top three places, but the weights are still starting with a seven. Yeah. How has we how have we ended up in this situation? Who knows? Um second place. Is it gonna be is it gonna be in the sixes? Is, is the runner six? up? Is the runner up? <laughs> No, it's a seven. Seven point zero eight kilograms. Group Armor FTJ, the Villa Falante, which means first place. Go well, on. I'll tell you what it also means. That oh, paint God. job on the Aston bikes might be. It has cost them a bit of weight. It's cost them a bit of weight, that, hasn't <laughs> yeah. it? Compared to the uh, FTJ bikes. Um, but in first place, our winner at six point nine eight kilograms. We've got under seven kilos. Still quite a way you could go to six point. Yeah, there is. Um, is Bora Hansgrohe with uh, specialized uh, SL8. Interesting. Mm. What I do want to point out, uh, that bike was using, it's, it's a small size, we've accounted for all that, but it was like the lightest setup I think you could probably get on the day. Okay. Small size bike, shallow wheels, super lightweight versions, like lightweight tires and inner tubes, probably saving some weight. There's a few bits and bobs there going on. The other big takeaway from all of this is that pro bikes are heavier now than what they were five years ago. Shock horror. Because they're no longer using tubular tires, they're no longer using rim brakes, um, and as a result, <laughs> they're fighting that weight. We um, used to be in a situation where the pros were adding, well, mechanics had to add ballast. <laughs> yeah, we're a to, long to, way from to that. To bikes to get them to the UCI weight limit, like putting fishing weights down the seat tube. Yeah, shock horror, all the bikes are basically over the minimum weight limit, which seems like an odd situation to be in. But yeah. I guess manufacturers and teams are prioritizing other aspects of bike performance other than just pure weight. But you want to know, what does this mean? You know, yeah. what is the disadvantage? And I'm sure some of the world tour riders might watch this. Because and those, if you're watching, you want to know what disadvantage you're at. Or advantage you might rather to. Yeah, and so we've done some maths. You okay. have. We left them. I left the maths. So to if you. we take on the most famous Tour de France climb of yeah. all, Alp d'Huez, and we model a seventy kilogram rider, which is typical for a Tour de France rider, doing six watts per kilo. Um, so if they were probably a bit more than what they'll be doing in the Grappetto, but what they would be doing at the sharp end of the race, um, where the time difference really matters, then we can see that from the slowest to the fastest, we're looking at. Um, around 26 seconds difference. Which is crazy. So that would be comparing, say, the EF bike to the Bora bike, yeah? The heaviest to the lightest. Yeah. Which is like mind-blowing to think over one climb, equipment choice, if you just purely focus on And you're, on you're looking at around just over 800 grams. 
So nearly a kilogram difference in weight. What does that mean in terms of watts? You only have to produce four watts more if you look at that mid pack, that, that, that area where teams are stuck and they are riding a seven and a half kilo bike. Yeah. You know, versus a team that can get their bike right down to that 6.9 sort of area. Um, and if you're there in that range and you're looking at around half a kilo's difference, you're looking at around 15 seconds, three watts. Which is probably what you could associate an attribute to the fact that now Primoz Roglic is riding for Bora and has made a switch from Yumbo, well, Visma Lisa bike. That's kind of almost the difference between the bike weights that we've got. Yes, but as we said, that's for the S5, which is the aero bikes heavier, and on a mountainous stage, we've seen that Primoz would always ride the, the R5 from Cervelo. So are we saying the bike weights are maybe not quite as important as lots of people make out? I think, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the upshot of this is that, well, yeah, you, you, the, in terms of being, being a pro, I think you'd just put it to the back of your mind if you were yeah. racing in the Tour. And we've said it many times over, aerodynamics typically trump weight the majority of the time. Yes, uh, the, because on the one hand, you'd go, well, what about all the energy that would be saved over the course of every climb on the tour? In terms of the kilojoules, those that extra little, you know, three watts that you might have to average on every climb, it's not much on one climb in isolation. But when winning margins are so small, maybe you could say it is a lot, yeah. but also, Average, you know, when you add that up in terms of the extra energy expenditure over every single climb in a massive race like the Tour de France, it suddenly becomes quite significant. But the counter to that is aero would still matter more for that. Also, what will be fun and what I think I'd like everyone to do is to let us know in the comments section down below how much your bike weighs compared to some of the pro bike weights, but crucially, the best bit of information is to also put the approximate value of your bike. So I think they're going to be lighter and cheaper a lot of the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, right, so that's the important bit ticked off, but I think we should probably have a quick run through of the raw weights as I actually weighed the bikes at the race before I made the corrections. Shall well, we just put this in a chart and put it up on screen? I think we should, yeah. To make our life a lot easier. Right, we'll take a look at the chart. Now then, before we move on, some of you will have noticed a mistake on my part here, and rightly so, because I've actually weighed the Cannondale Super 6, not the System 6 for EF Education, the Canyon Ultimate, not the Air Road for Alpa Syndicernic, and the Bianchi Specialissima, not the Ultra RC for Arkea, which are the lighter of their team bike options. Now, I hope you can all forgive me for this. And for total clarity, here is me actually weighing each bike. Thanks very much. What could the pros do to actually reduce the weight of their bikes and make them 6.8? Because I think they could. Well, crucially, is it actually going to make any difference to the bike's overall performance? Well, I mean, we've already shown that it wouldn't. You know, you'd <laughs> okay, be 17 yeah. seconds quicker up, up the West, whatever. Yeah, so, fair point. To them, yeah. But, um, but say, for example, if we took, like, Ineos, yeah. with their 7.3 kilogram dogmas, okay, looking at the setup that they have, I'm pretty confident that you could drop that down to the UCI weight limit. Yeah. By making a few changes. What are you thinking? Right, so they're running Shimano power meters. Yeah. Okay? <coughs> they're yeah. like 750 grams for Dura Shimano power meter. Swap that out for, for, you know, rotor twin power. There's other ones available as well that are lighter, but that's 530 grams. Dual-sided, done. Uh, so what's that, a 200, so you, 300? Yes, yeah, so you made, made like 200 gram saving there. You know, yeah. you look at the pedals, typically they're running Shimano pedals. Jura Ace pedals are, I made a note of it here, 233 grams versus the Speedplay Nanos with the titanium axles. Yeah. Yeah? They're like 168 grams. So there's some ways to try and save, like by switching crucial parts out, but also... Well, saddles as well. Like, it yeah. might, you might not want it all the time, but say like if you were, you know, Garrett Thomas and you're doing that time trial, bang on just the bare carbon saddles that weigh like, just you know, sacrifice 70 it. grams or something, you know, like Seller Italia do them. You know, like those those sorts of things compared to the normal saddle that the pros might run, which is 170 grams. You know, again, 100 grams saved. So very quickly, you've got to that 6.8 mark. Yeah, there's a few different ways that I was thinking of. One of them would be to just generally run skinnier time trial tires most of the time, because some teams are still using a all rounder wide tire, save some weight there. Yeah, but that's gonna 
You're just going to negatively impact That's going to negatively music. impact you. Yeah, I, I was just throwing it out there. I'm thinking of ways that <laughs> won't negatively affect the performance. I don't really want to say this because I think it's a really, a really good point that we've seen evolve over the last few years. Lose all the custom paint jobs. What custom way? paint jobs are faster. <laughs> the cooler your bike looks, the faster it goes. You just, that, whatever. But <laughs> lose the custom paint jobs, you're going to save quite a bit of weight there. I, no, I don't, say so. I'm not saying I want to see that. Switch to shallow wheels. Um, people use, like we've already mentioned, switching from an aero bike to a lightweight bike. And also switching out non-sponsor components in general. Kind of like what you've mentioned there. Um, but there's lots of different aspects and areas. I think if you really want to trick a bike out, you could. But obviously teams are contractually obliged to use the partners and the brands that they're associated with. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, I think there's a lot of, at the moment, <clears throat> teams have become less obsessed with getting the bikes as light as possible. And if they did actually put more thought into it, I think there are things that they could do to do it. I know they're bound by sponsorship yeah. commitments, but there are things that could be done. And, you know... Someone is going to put in the comments that roll back five, six, seven years or so and use that kind of bike and tech where you've got skinny wheels, skinny tyres, not really an aero frame, rim brakes and mechanical gears, the bikes were lighter. But I do genuinely believe that as an overall package, a modern bike is faster than a bike from 10 years ago. You know what they're going to say? <laughs> they're going to say that you're part of the cycling Illuminati, I the am. global cabal of conspiracies that is just to sell yeah. them things that they don't need. And well, that it's not actually that. faster and it's yeah. a big conspiracy. But I agree with you. It's not to say the bikes from that era are absolutely rubbish at all, because they're not. They're incredible bikes. Yep. But I do think the modern bikes still do have that edge, but one of the prices that you're having to pay for it is that they're now heavier. It's counterintuitive, but when you look at the savings that, we're, that, that you can see from weight, the weight difference, like we're saying, the classic thing, a kilo is worth less than five watts on Alpdoers. Five watts gives you more performance on Alpdoers than a kilo. And if you look at the classic example of, say, going from tubular tyres yeah. to going to a tubeless setup, that's less than a kilo's weight difference. But the, tubu the tubeless, more modern, slightly heavier setup has much lower rolling resistance, typically a, a bigger margin than that five watts, so overall quicker. And that is reflected in the times that we see the pros do these days. Okay, well, at the end of the day, if you're not racing the Tour de France, who cares? Go out, choose the bike that you like the most, is most comfortable, and actually fits in with your budget. Do you feel that's a fair way to end? Yeah. Um, on that note, please do let us know in the comments section down below about the weight of your bike. And also, if you haven't subscribed to GCN Tech already, please do, and um, turn on notifications so you don't miss out on future videos we make. Right, see you later. Love you, bye.